I am Tony. Uh, let's begin with, um, is it Annette? Annette Rodriguez. Hi, can you hear me? Hi, yes. Hello. Hi, how are you? Fine, thanks. And you? I'm great. Thanks for asking. Um, Annette, where are you from? I'm from Mazatlán, Sinaloa, Mexico. Sinaloa. And what do you do? Are you a student or do you work? Yes, I'm, I'm a student at university. Okay. Uh, and what are you studying? Um, I'm studying business management engineering. Okay. It's Excellent. like a business administration and industrial engineering. Oh, wow. Excellent. Nice to meet you, Annette. Nice to meet you too. Excellent. Let's say hi to Lynn. Hi, Lynn. Hi. Hi, how are you? Hi, how I'm are very you? good. Thank you. Excellent. Uh, Lynn, where are you from? I'm from Vietnam. Now I live in Ho Chi Minh City. Excellent. And what do you do? Uh, are you a student or do you work? I'm student in university. And what are you studying? I study in accounting. Okay, so I'm studying accounting. Yeah. Okay, great. Nice to meet you, Lynn. Nice to meet you too. Uh, let's say hi to Luis. Hi, Luis. Hello, teacher. And hello, hi, everybody. how are you? Uh, I'm doing very well. Thanks for asking. Excellent. And uh, Luis, uh, where are you from and what do you do? Uh, yeah, I'm from Peru and I'm studying at university. My major is accounting. I'm studying. Mm -hmm. I'm studying. I'm, I'm studying. studying. I'm studying, studying. in accounting. university. Okay, great. Uh, thanks, uh, Luis. Uh, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too, teacher. Let's say hi to Eduardo. Hello, Eduardo. Oh, sorry, Aaron. Let's say hi to Aaron. Hi, Aaron. Can you hear me? Oh, Aaron left. Okay, let's try Eduardo. Hi, Eduardo. Hello, Tony. How are you? I'm fantastic. How are you? Excellent. Thank you. Very good. And please tell the class where are you from and what do you do? I'm from Mexico. I'm living in Puebla City. I'm an industrial engineer. I'm working for an automotive company in the production area. Okay, excellent. Nice to meet you, Eduardo. Nice to meet you too, Tony. Okay, so welcome, everyone. Uh, today, our topic is IELTS. Uh, it's a general overview. Um, we're going to start. Um, I want to know, um, uh, have you done uh, or are you planning on doing the IELTS test? Uh, um, in the future or in the past. So have you done it in the past or are you planning on doing it in the future? Then we're going to talk about what do you know about the IELTS test. Um, then we're going to listen to a, well, watch a video about a IELTS course. And then we're going to discuss what do you think, um, uh, what help do you need? And what do you think you need to study on the most? And you can practice asking questions about the IELTS exam. So I'll be able to answer your questions at the end. Um, so let's begin with uh, Annette. Um, Annette, have you or are you planning on doing the IELTS test? Um, I'm planning to apply for the IELTS test in the future. Okay. When, do you, when do you want to do it? Mm, maybe two years. In two, In two years. years. Is this wh yeah. why? Why? Why do you? Why do you want to do it? Excuse me. So, what is the reason? Why do you want to do the IELTS? Is it part of? Do you want to study in the UK, or do you need it as part of your degree? Is it a degree requirement, or do you want to go to the UK to study? Because I'd like to do a master in the UK. Okay, excellent. <laughs> okay, so when do you finish your studies now? When do you finish your industrial, sorry, your My business? My university. Yeah, when are you going to finish? Yeah. 
in two years. In two years time. Okay. Excellent. Uh, great. Thanks. Thanks, Annette. Uh, let's check in with uh, Lynn. What about you, Lynn? Um, have you done or are you planning on doing the IELTS? Yeah, I have planning uh, on doing the AL. Learn. Yes. Okay. Why do you want to do the Why do you want to do the IELTS? Yeah, next year I will do a change. Um, imagine, and I begins uh a start work, and I need I I need the uh, IL. Do you need IELTS for work, or do you need IELTS for your degree? For work. Why do you need IELTS for work? Which company is asking you for IELTS? Um, no, uh, I, no, I, I, I don't know uh, what company, but I think uh, I have IL. I have the opinions uh, work. Okay, so IELTS does not help you to get a job. Um, IELTS is for your degree. So sometimes you, you will have for your degree, you need IELTS, or if you want to study um, for a, um, a master's or you want to study in the UK or in Australia, um, IELTS is very difficult. Um, it uh, takes a lot of work and it's mostly for studying. Um, so if you do it for a job, um, they're not going to look at your IELTS score. They mostly interview you and then see what your English is like. Um, it's not a good thing. There are other tests that are better for the work. Um, the IELTS is for study. It's a lot of work, um, Lynn. Uh, so please, later on, you can ask questions about that and I'll be able to answer you more. So when, when are you planning on doing it? When you finish your studies. Is that right, Lynn? It is a next year. Next year. Okay. It's expensive. It's about $150 and it's not going to give you a job. Um, so it's more for study. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh no! Um, but but in Vietnam, when we have is a IL, we can uh, have job easy or easy than not have. Okay. Yeah. Um, Len, I have lived in Vietnam for ten years. Um, I know many employers <laughs> about yeah. Vietnam. It is not necessarily where they're going to look at your uh, score. They look at other things. Oh. But it's okay. We can talk about it a little bit later. Okay. Hi, Louis. Hey, hey, teacher. Louis? Yes, I'm here. Hi. Uh, okay, so Louis, what about you? Have you done or are you planning on doing the IELTS test in the future or um, in the past? Yeah, uh, I am planning uh, to take the test in the next next year. Okay, and why do you want to take the test? Well, uh, basically, it's, it's a, it's a um, professional in, uh, develop development. Okay. Yeah. Is your company asking you to do the test? Uh, not not exactly. Okay. So, like I said, for the IELTS, there it's a very academic focus. Um, some companies ask for the IELTS, but they usually it's the TOEFL they ask for. So some American companies, some accounting companies, they will ask you, and then they will pay for it. Um, so it's. It's great to do the test, but if you're not going to be studying, it's a lot of work and it's very, very expensive. Okay, so if you're trying to do it for because it's going to, you think it's going to help you get a job, um, some employers, they will look at the IELTS score and then they won't base their, uh, their employment on that. They will base their employment on your interview, so how good you can speak and how good you can answer your questions. So it's not going to get you a job. It's not going to guarantee you a job. Um, and it's really a lot of work, okay, to get a high score, um, and it's mostly for people that want to study, okay, Luis? Okay, thank you, teacher, for your advice. Okay. Hi, Eduardo. Hi. Hi. So, Eduardo, um, what about you? Have you done or are you planning on doing the IELTS test? I have not done this uh, test and it's not also into my plans to, to do it. So it's not part of my plans? Yeah, it's not part of my plans. Okay. Uh, so today... I, I, think, I, I think I agree with you. Uh, in, uh, 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 when you are in a, in a working process, uh, probably the, the 
HR department is not looking for your punctuation. Uh, they only want to know if you are able to speak, to learn, to, to read, to, to write in English. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, most most employers they look at it and it's great you have it, but they don't base they don't base their decision. They don't say must have an IELTS degree. It's not a requirement. Um, so most uh, almost every single company there are some companies that have the requirement. They are all in the financial services. So like for instance, Ernest and Young, Procter and Gamble, um, Chase Manhattan. These companies, Deloitte, Deloitte. I know these companies have a requirement where they want you to score. But those are the only companies in the world that I know of <laughs> that want the IELTS test. And it's a lot of hard work, okay? Okay, great, thanks, Eduardo. Um, so, Eduardo, today's lesson is going to be based on the IELTS. It's great for general test uh, preparation, but it's a very focused lesson for today. Okay, great. Yep. Um, okay. Thank you, thank you, everyone. So, now my next question is, I want to know, what do you know about the IELTS test? If you don't know anything, that's okay. You can say, I don't know anything. Uh, but what do you want, I want to know, what do you know about the the speaking, the listening, the reading, and the writing. Um, so if you can, any any information, if you don't know anything, that's okay. But I'm looking for like how many questions, how long does it take, um, what do you have to do in the test? So I just want to know, what do you know about the IELTS test? Now let's begin with you, Annette. What do you know about the IELTS test? Uh, well, the only thing that I know for the IELTS test is the most difficult exam, uh, and it's for four parts that speaking, listening, uh, reading, and writing. Okay, good. So you know it's a difficult test. It is a difficult test, and there are four parts so reading, <laughs> listening, writing, and speaking. Excellent. Um, great. Thanks, Annette. Uh, what about you, Lynn? Uh, what do you know about the test? Mm. Group, uh, the TED group, the TED includes a uh, first session is a uh, reading, writing, uh, listening, and speaking, and is a uh, now is a uh, listening, reading, and uh, listening is about three hour, yeah, and is a uh, from speaking only is a uh, fifteen minutes. Very good, yes. So the speaking is actually 11 to 14 minutes. So it's always between 11 to 14 minutes. And you are right, the, the, the reading, the writing, and the listening, it's about three three hours, or sorry, it's about, sorry, it's about two and a half hours. So 60 minutes, 60 minutes, and a half an hour. So you have 60 minutes for the, for the reading, 60 minutes for the um, writing, and you have, uh, the, the listening is about 30 to 40 minutes. So it's between two and a half and three hours for the test. Excellent, excellent. Lynn. And uh, what about you, uh, Luis? Um, what do you know about the test? Yeah, I know that, um, first of all, I, I also means um, the International English Language uh, Testing System. And uh, maybe I could say that um, is uh, designed to improve our, our ability in 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 the four in the four in the four abilities uh, like uh, you said and uh, working writing listening and uh, speaking and yeah it's, uh, uh, mm, mm, um, therefore there uh, it's a <coughs> Uh, very important uh, uh, test in, in a lot of company consider it uh, valuable useful this okay. uh, test which which companies uh, I know that uh, uh, some companies here in my country uh, okay. uh, uh, very considerate uh, this this ability or oh, this 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 kind of test. Okay, so can you give me like the name of the company? Yes, uh, one is uh, a uh, for example, uh, when 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 somebody needs to or, or want to teach an 
want to teach English, for example. So uh, the okay. u University Pacific name Pacific University here in, in my country is a uh, it's a very uh, very popular uh, university in in that uh, university it's necessary to pass that that kind of exam and so for a yes. university requirement it's a university like I said in the beginning it's a university requirement okay that you need it to finish your degree or you're using it to study in another country of exactly. course if you want exactly. to be a teacher of English then you need to score 8.5 out of 9 so then companies that are looking for a teacher of English, you need to get an 8.5, okay, to a 9 out of the ALS. So then you are at near native level speaking. So um, of course, English teachers, they can use this exam if they are not native speakers. So if they don't come from the UK or the USA, <laughs> companies accept it. Okay, they accept the, the, the certification, but it's not a requirement. Okay, um, you can think they consider it. They say they consider it but it's not top of their list, okay? It's not a high requirement. They're looking at many other skills before they need it. So my advice to you is to use this if you're going to a university, okay? Because it's a lot of time and it's a lot of effort. Okay, so university or if your university requires it from you as one of your degree requirements. These are the two most important reasons. If you're doing it for a job, it's better to ask the job, uh, the company directly if it's a requirement, if they're going to consider it, Okay, or if it's what they will accept it. Most companies will say they accept it because it's international. Uh, international. How far they consider it, or how far, how much it changes their decision, it's not very high. Okay, that's ten years of experience that I'm telling you there. <laughs> but it's up to you. If you want to do the test, it's a lot of hard work and it's expensive. Exactly. Okay, great. Thanks, Thank uh, Luis. Um, Eduardo, um, what about you, Eduardo? What do you know about the test? I don't know anything about. ELTS exam. Okay, good. That's okay. <laughs> so far, um, so so what we've got so far is there are four sections. Um, the speaking section is about eleven to fourteen minutes. You've got the reading; it's sixty minutes. The listening is six, it's thirty to forty minutes, and the writing is also sixty minutes. Okay, it's a lot of work. We're going to watch an overview, and they're going to talk about um, the course, okay, and what is expected, and how many lessons they are going to have. So please listen, and I want you to think. Which of the sections do you think is the most difficult? Okay, so for you um, and for people that teach it, what do you think is going to be uh, the most difficult? And one, sorry, one last thing I want to, to, to say. The IELTS test does not improve your English. The IELTS test gives you a score on your current level, and it's only valid for two years. So the IELTS test tests you, and it sees what is your, IELTS, uh, your English ability now. And it gives you a range. So the, the lowest score is one all the way to nine. And what they do is they put the students in a band. So you would normally see someone for intermediate level will be anywhere from between 4.5 to 6.5. And what it does is it tests that ability. So if you practice doing the IELTS test, you will score at the higher end. If you don't do any practice, you'll score at the lower end. But if you practice the test, which most people do, you should be in the middle of your ability. IELTS is not designed to improve. It's designed to test your current ability. And it's only valid for two years. Okay, so it's a very it's an intensive test and it takes long and it tests your ability today. Okay, let's have a look. I'm going to share my screen. So good. Okay, let's have a look. So please listen to what she says about the test and which one do you think is going to be more difficult for you about the um, IELTS preparation course? Let me just quickly check. Hi, Annette. Hi. Hi, can you see my screen? Yes. Can you read the title for me, please? Yes. Um, IELTS overview, uh, understanding the overall structure of the IELTS prep course. Okay. So what does this mean, IELTS prep course? What are they teaching you? Are they are they improving your English or are they teaching you how to do the test? Um, teaching how can I you do the test? Good. Because remember, we've got 60 minutes to do um, 40 questions in the reading. We've got 60 minutes to write. Okay. You've also got to do listening. 
So the prep preparation course is how to do the test. Doesn't improve your English. It gives you methods and strategies to get a better mark in the test. Okay, let's have a look. Hi everyone and welcome to the IELTS prep course. We're really happy that you decided to because we know that going it alone, studying for an important test like this can be really stressful. So we're here to help. This course will have 75 lessons divided into five sections. The first section will be an overview. Here to see the IELTS as a test and give you some background information. That will have five lessons. The next two sections will be listening and reading. Each of those will have 20 lessons. The last two sections will be writing and speaking. Those will both have 15 lessons. The writing, reading, listening, and speaking sections are going to be great ways for you to practice and learn the types of tasks that you'll encounter and be expected to do when you take the IELTS. Also, each of those sections will give you a little more information and a little more of an overview of that particular section so that you know what to expect from the test. And the more you practice, the more you understand the test, the more comfortable and the more confident you're going to be when you sit down to take the IELTS in person. So thanks again for joining us and we hope you enjoy it. Okay, let's have a, uh, have a look. Um, hi, Annette. Hi. Hi, what does she say that the, the course is about? What are you going to do on the course? Um, it's going to write uh, sections. Okay. And the course is going to help us to prep for the IELTS test in the uh, sections like uh, speaking, writing, listening, and reading. Good. And sorry, how many sections did you say? I don't remember. 70, I think. Okay, so uh, 70, that, that's 75 lessons or uh, 75 sections? 75 lessons. Lessons. Okay, excellent. Very good, Annette. Hi, Lynn. Yes. Well, how many lessons were going to be about the overview? They're going to be 5, 15, or 20? Overview, I think uh, 15. 15 for the overview. Okay, great. Uh, Luis, uh, do you agree? 15 for the overview? How many lessons? I think, yes, uh, I think it's, uh, it was uh, 75 lessons. Okay, and how many lessons for the overview? The 5 or 15? Uh, 15. 15, okay. And how many how many lessons for the speaking and listening? Sorry, speaking and writing. I apologize. Speaking and writing, 15 or 20? Uh, I think it was 20. 20. Okay, great. Um, hi, Eduardo. Hi, Tim. So how many lessons were the reading and listening? Is it 15 or 20? I'm not sure, but I think it was 15 and the overview was 5. And the other view is five, and the speaking and the writing was how many? I'm not sure, but I think it was uh, 20. 20, okay, excellent. Um, let's listen again. So this time, please listen for how many sections, okay? And also please listen for how many sections are the listening, how many lessons are in the overview, how many lessons for reading and listening, and how many lessons for speaking and writing. Let's listen one more time. Hi everyone and welcome to the IELTS prep course. We're really happy that you decided to <coughs> join us because we know that going it alone, studying for an important test like this can be really stressful. So we're here to help. This course will have 75 lessons divided into five sections. The first section will be an overview. Here to see the IELTS as a test, give you some background information. That will have five lessons. The next two sections will be listening and reading. Each of those will have 20 lessons. The last two sections will be writing and speaking. Those will both have 15 lessons. The writing, reading, listening, and speaking sections are going to be 
great ways for you to practice and learn the types of tasks that you'll encounter and be expected to do when you take the IELTS. Also, each of those sections will give you a little more information and a little more of an overview of that particular section so that you know what to expect from the test. And the more you practice, the more you understand the test, the more comfortable and the more confident you're going to be when you sit down to take the IELTS in person. So, thanks again for joining us and we hope you enjoy it. Okay, let's have a look. Uh, so, Annette, how many sections, sorry, uh, yeah, how many sections are there? Section, um, five lessons. Five sections. Five sections. sections. Very good. And Lynn, uh, how many how many lessons in the overview? Mm, five lessons. Five lessons. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And Louise, how many how many lessons for the uh, reading and the listening? Uh, for reading and listening was a uh, fifteen lessons. Oh, sorry, 20. Or 20, 20 lessons. 20 lessons. And, uh, and Eduardo, how many, um, how many for the speaking and, sorry, how many for the uh, speaking and writing? Eduardo, are you there? 15. 15. Yeah, I'm here. 15. Right. 15. So 75, 75 lessons, five lessons overview. Then you have 20 lessons for reading, 20 lessons for listening. Then 15 for speaking and 15 for writing. Okay, so 75 lessons. Now, what do you think? Uh, do you think this is enough time? Do you think it's a, it's a short, a long, or an okay class to prepare for the IELTS? Let's begin with you, Annette. For this course, do you think it's okay? What do you think about the length? Do you think you need more time? Do you think you need less time? Do you think it's okay? What's your opinion? So let's say one lesson is one hour. Okay, so one lesson is one hour. That's about 75 hours. Do you think this is too much, too little, or okay? And why? Mm. For me, I think is um, not too much, but uh, I think it's not enough. It's not too much, but it is not enough. Why? Why do you think that? Well, uh, in my case, I feel that I need to practice more and more because in my city, I can practice with anyone. So I need to practice and I need to study a lot because of that. Because you cannot, is it because you cannot practice with anyone in your city? Is that right? Yes. Because I cannot. Okay, okay, excellent. Very good point. Thanks, Annette. Annette, please ask Lynn the same question. So please ask Lynn what does she think about the preparation course? Hi, Lynn. Uh, what do you think of the preparation course? Yes, I Hello? Mean, in... Yes. Uh, and it is. Um... Mm. We need uh, a lot of time to bring questions first. We can uh, we we need to practice a lot of when we then we can confident to the chat and uh, only uh, accept uh, we practice a uh, course a uh, class we can do uh, a uh, practice on the lies. On um, yes, and time uh, prepares a uh, car is not enough for the chat. A uh, chat because I have difficult, very difficult. Okay, so you're saying it's not enough. It's not enough time because you have to practice the test many times. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Good. Good, Lynn. Uh, Lynn, please ask Luis uh, the same question. Yes. Hi, Luis. Uh, what do you think of the pre-patients course? Uh, hi, Lynn. Uh, well, I think that uh, 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 it's important to practice a lot in order to achieve our goal. And 
and yeah and this kind of preparation and it's uh, excellent uh, because uh, it's it's a uh, one way mm, that we can we 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 can following to achieve in in uptime a great score. Okay, so do you think this is a, the right amount of time? So seventy five hours is it's it's correct, the right amount. Uh, I I I think it's okay because uh, it, uh, honestly, uh, it speak one language. It's not just one, two, or three hours. It speak uh, it speak an. A, a new language is is almost all uh, all our life, and yeah, uh, I think it's okay. Okay, so for the test, it's okay, but not for learning the language because that's going to take your whole life. Mm, yeah. Okay. Correct. Is that no, exactly. I'm asking you. <laughs> I want to know. But I think that's what you're saying. Is that correct? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, exactly. That's why I wanted to say. Okay, okay, good, good, good point. Very good point. I agree. Um, language learning is for life. Um, so in 75 hours, okay. Okay, great. Uh, Luis, please say hi to um, Eduardo and ask Eduardo the same question. Hey, hi, Eduardo. Eduardo, and what do you think of the preparation course? Well, according with Tony information, uh, which is related that the, the this uh, exam is only to know what's the level of English that you have according with this uh, uh, test. Uh, I think it's enough because are the rules, are examples, I think, to know how you need to to take advantage of the, of the test, uh, uh, where you need to probably take more minutes or where do you need to take less minutes uh, in the in the test and also probably some advices so in my opinion i think it's uh it's enough with this course because so um, because it gives some advice it's advice advice okay good great thanks eduardo and eduardo please ask tony and then we'll continue hello tony hi Tony, uh, what, what do you think about this uh, preparation course? I think it's quite good. Um, 75 hours, it's, it's, it's longer than most preparation courses. Um, all the preparation courses that I've worked on, I think the shortest that I've had was 32 hours. Um, that's from the British uh, Council. They usually do a 32 hour course and that's just the basic information. So they just give you the basic, the basic information. Then the next course, which is kind of like a little bit more in depth, it was about 60 hours. Um, and that course gives you the information and gives you some time to practice. And then the, for the lower levels, I've seen a courses for about 100 hours. OK, so that's where they get a lot more practice in, in how to do the, uh, the, the, the test. So that's generally the, the courses that I've worked with is 32, 60 and 100. So I think 75 is good. I think it will give you a lot of information and will be able to tell you what um, you need to know. Um, but what Lynn and Annette said was, even though you've done this course, doesn't mean you're going to get, it doesn't mean you're going to get the score that you want. It's just going to give you what your score is. So if you want to improve that result, if you have a target, and most people have a target of 6.5. So that's what most people want to get. Uh, they want to get a 6.5 because this allows them to go to university and this is the requirement for most. That means you must get six for writing, six for listening, six for uh, reading and six for speaking and you must get 6.5 overall. So that's the target. Um, for that target, 75 hours is not enough <laughs> um, for people that are uh, at intermediate levels. My experience is that you need about you need about 150 to 200 hours of preparation time um, for to get that 6.5. For someone that's a low intermediate or intermediate level, will need to invest about 200 hours to get to that 6.5. That's 200 hours of study, okay, uh, to be able to get to that reading. The the, the problem for most students is the writing. Uh, the writing and then the, the the speaking. So usually reading and listening, it's at about seven. Um, once they practice that a lot, and then it takes much longer to get the writing and the speaking up. So usually that's what's going to happen. Um, you want to aim for about a seven, uh, for seven for reading and listening, 
you want to get about a 6.5 for your speaking and you want to get about a 6 for your for your writing um, which is what most people are going for because that's where the, uh, they're going to study for university so for just knowing about the test uh, how to do the test that's fine to be able to get the 6.5 it's not enough there's a lot of practice that you need to do before you are comfortable enough to be able to do that test okay um, so now what I'd like is uh, you can ask me any questions you'd like to ask so um, about the IELTS test um, we'll begin with Annette and then Lynn and Luis and Eduardo so Annette anything you want to know about the test what to do next uh, you can ask me any questions about the IELTS um, the IELTS is um, in British English or American English? Um, okay, so is, is the IELTS British or American? Let's try that. Is the IELTS British or American English? Let's try that. So please repeat. Is the IELTS British or American English? Uh, the IELTS test is in British English. So let's try this the sentence. Is the IELTS British or American Is the IELTS British Is. or American English? Um, okay, so IELTS was started between um, the British Council and IDP in Australia and in um, in the UK. So it uses, it's mostly considered to be British English, but it uses Australian, New Zealand, um, it uses um, the UK, Scotland, Ireland, South African English, it uses Canadian English, there's even sometimes with the listening, you will listen to American English too. Um, so it's mostly considered to be British, okay, but it uses um, accents from all over for the listening section. So you will hear different accents from all of the um, different English speaking countries. It's generally considered if it is just this is just a, it's not it's both countries accept. So IELTS and TOEFL, both countries accept. Um, some people say if you're going to America, it's better to do the TOEFL. Uh, if you're going to the UK, it's better to do the IELTS. In my experience, that's not the case. In my experience, if you prefer to speak to a computer, do the TOEFL. If you prefer to speak to a person, do the IELTS. Uh, because the IELTS, you will speak to someone like me, you will be in an interview. But on the TOEFL, you will speak to a computer and you'll have 60 seconds to speak. So that's the difference. That's usually what I say is the big difference uh, for the test. Some people are better speaking to people. Some people are better alone, uh, working alone. Does that answer your question? Uh, the last, what do you recommend uh, better, the TOEFL or the IELTS? Uh, usually I say yeah, again, it's the same thing. So speaking, if you prefer speaking to person face to face, go for the IELTS. Um, if you are very good for academic vocabulary, go for the TOEFL. If you prefer um, writing, okay, um, things on paper, do the IELTS. If you prefer using a computer, do the TOEFL. Um, they are different, but the, the main differences are, these are the main differences. So usually I start with which university are you going, American or uh, British? Then I say, do you prefer speaking to people face to face? Or do you prefer speaking to a computer, being alone in a room with many other people and you'll have the headsets on? These are the two big factors. Then I will say if you've got very strong academic vocabulary, then TOEFL is better for you because that's the most difficult part of the TOEFL test is the academic vocabulary. If your vocabulary is not so strong, better to do the IELTS. Okay? Okay, thank you. Okay, okay. great. Uh, Lynn, any questions? Yes. Uh, teacher, uh, what you have the tip for the test, I am? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, what, what tips? Tip? Uh, yes. So what, what tips do? <laughs> My first thing is I always say do the tests. At least I usually say 10 times. So there's a book, it's called the Cambridge IELTS Test. Um, they go from 1 to 14. So Cambridge IELTS Practice Tests. And you can find them everywhere. They start from book one and they go to book 14. Uh, buy, buy book 14 first and then go 14, 13, 12, 11. Okay, and do at least four books. In each book, there are four tests. Okay, so there are four tests in each book. Um, they are practice tests. Okay, do four books. Okay, practice tests. That's your own study. That is where you're just studying by yourself. 
on how to do this test. So do the preparation course and then do at least four books. All my students that have done very well on the test, they have done four books of practice tests. So that means they have done 12 tests. Um, they understand it. So I usually say give it, if you are doing 12, 12 weeks of preparation, which is normal, you're doing 12 weeks for preparation, and then you're doing about, maybe you're doing about six hours per week. So that's about 100 hours, okay? Then plus you are doing uh, 12 tests, that is 12 multiplied by three, okay? Um, that is another uh, 36, 46 hours. Then you've got about 150 hours, then you need another 50 hours of speaking and practicing and doing the writing tests uh, to improve where you need more, uh, uh, more practice. So where you see you are not scoring, you need to work on those parts. You need to work on the parts where you're scoring lower uh, and uh, work on making yourself more time efficient. A lot of the IELTS is about time. So you really need to understand your time management. And the only way to do that is to do the practice tests. The Cambridge IELTS practice tests, they're books one to 14. Don't buy books one, two, and three. They are, the test is different. Uh, buy books 14, 13, 12, 11. Do four practice tests, one per week. That's my advice there. Is that okay, Len? Okay, thank you. And Luis, uh, any questions? Yes. Um, I would like to know, um, for example, uh, um, would you do you do you work and in 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 as a as a as a teacher or as do you do you confirm maybe a IELTS group or TOEFL group in one sure. one time? Have you are you asking me have I taught IELTS and have I taught TOEFL? Is that your question? Uh, yeah, maybe that that, that that's what. Okay. I, yes. So I started about let me see now it was about maybe eleven years ago. I've done intensive IELTS courses, so I've been teaching IELTS for about eleven years. Um, I stopped about. Two years ago, doing the intensive IELTS. Now I only do private, but I've done courses. Uh, I've done courses for years and years and years and years on the IELTS. Uh, my experience is a lot less with the TOEFL. I've only done TOEFL online courses, okay, where I've done those. But the IELTS I've probably been teaching now for 10, 11, maybe this is my 12th year now uh, for a lot. I've done too many courses. I can't tell you how many courses I've taught. It's been too many. Okay. Does that uh, uh, and what what is the most the most powerful key to to speak a little bit quickly, <laughs> maybe in order to, um, to to improve your fluency? Exactly. Okay. Um, there's a couple of things. Um, for improving fluency, that depends what your what your what your problem is. Um, but to improve fluency, of course, it is speaking. It is practice. It's like soccer. The more you practice, the better you will get. Some people have different problems. Um, so for instance, some people have problems with vocabulary. They can't remember the right word. Um, some people struggle with grammar, okay, because they want to be very accurate. And then some people, they, they struggle with pronunciation. So it depends really uh, what your main issue there is. Um, with grammar, what I always say is don't worry about the grammar. The grammar will fix itself in time. So don't worry about uh, the grammar. Just try to communicate. Okay. The grammar will fix. As you practice, the grammar will fix itself. And when you make a mistake, correct it immediately. So if you notice you make a mistake, correct it. Okay. So that's the, the quickest way with the grammar. For vocabulary, I recommend um, paraphrase. So it's like, don't worry that you forgot the word. Use other words to to describe the word. So I can't remember the watch, but I can't remember the word, but it's, you know, you put it on your hand over here and when you want to know the time, uh, it's it will tell you what is the time, but I can't remember that word, but I forgot it at home and it's on my table, it's black and it has leather, ah, watch. Okay, it's my watch, I forgot my watch. So what, what I normally say there with vocabulary, don't worry about it, just explain it. Okay, so you explain the word, but even if it's a simple word, just explain it because this 
will help you develop your fluency, but also give you time to remember the word. Um, with pronunciation, there it's listening. A lot of listening, a lot of repeating, okay? And even going in front of a mirror, listening to something, watching the mouth. Okay, so there's the big issue with uh, it's with the mouth. So being able to watch someone and then watch this and have a mirror and then watch your mouth because that's the key to pronunciation. It's not because you don't know, it's because your mouth, it's a, it's a technical thing. It's not a, a, about ability. We all have the ability to make the sound. We just have to move the mouth. So watch the mouth and then practice by following the mouth. So those are my tips for fluency. Does that answer your question? Thank you very much. It was a great advice. Great, excellent. And then Eduardo, any questions? Questions, Tony. Thank you. You sure? We've got a minute or two. Okay, I know you don't want to do the IELTS test, so I can understand you don't want to do it. Okay, guys, um, that was that was excellent. Okay, so just to quickly summarize, yeah, this test it's not easy. Okay, it's not an easy test. There's a lot of time. You need to be able to invest about 200 to 250 hours. Okay, that's what I would suggest you invest if you are serious about get to doing this test and you want to get a 6.5. Okay, um, that's minimum probably. And it, of course, it depends on everyone. Everyone depends. It depends on how much work they do. But that for me is about the general amount. The shortest amount of preparation can be about 32 hours. That's not necessarily going to give you a 6.5, but it will tell you what the test is about, okay? And you'll be able to do the test, okay? And you'll probably score at the bottom of your level. So that will tell you if you did the practice, then you will be at the top of your level, okay? But the IELTS test does not improve your English. It measures your ability at a certain point. While studying for the test, you might improve. You will improve by using different strategies uh, with English that you will improve it and you will improve in how to take the test. That's what these courses do. Um, the test is expensive. OK, it's an expensive test. I think it's about one hundred and fifty dollars. Um, that's the average price. If you look at uh, different countries, it might be a little bit cheaper. It might be a little bit more expensive. Um, and um, so it's not something just to do without having a good reason for it. In my experience, the only companies that require are financial institutions like Deloitte and Procter and Gamble. These are requirements. Universities have them as requirements to finish their degree. So in Mexico, if you're doing a degree, you might have a requirement um, to finish it. And then if you want to study abroad, you will have a requirement to study. These are the three main reasons for doing the test. A lot of companies accept the IELTS as a measure of your, um, of your English ability. However, the amount of influence that is, it's maybe not worth doing 250 hours to get the 6.5 paying at $150. You need to think about that carefully. If you've got a company that you would like to approach, then maybe, you know, you need to speak to them directly and find out how much of a role. So I would suggest you speak to HR managers and get their opinion. In my experience, it's not big. They normally, they listen to you and they listen to how you communicate. That's how they make a decision. Um, the IELTS is just something that they accept. Um, great. Um, thanks, everyone. That was excellent. Good luck on your IELTS um, uh, training. Hope to see you soon, and we'll have another lesson. Bye-bye, uh, everyone. Thank you, teacher. Thank you, Tony. Bye-bye. See you later.